Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric Beatty here once again. Excited to share with you a new guitar that I've had for several months now and I didn't really demo it or anything like that because I wanted to get my hands around it, get a feel for it and see how it sounded, see how it played. And I'm happy to share with you today this wonderful guitar. This is a guitar by a company called Fesley. You might be able to see it here on the guitar headstock here. And it is, to me, an amazing guitar if you're on a budget. We're gonna be doing some talking points today about the different uh, features, the different aspects, the different tones, the different things like that. For gear, I'm using my Helix Native plug-in here on Traction Waveform for my DAW. And hopefully everything is sounding real well. Yeah, it looks like it is. Looks like we're sounding good, coming in loud and clear. So let's talk about this guitar. We have here a Fesley guitar in Mirandi Red. Now, right off the bat, I'll tell you that, as you can see on the screen here, it probably does not look red. It's more of a milk chocolate brown color, in my opinion. It's a nice color, don't get me wrong. If I had to do it over again, or if I decide to get another one of their guitars, which I very likely might, I would probably go with the Sunburst. I like the Sunburst color. And when I originally bought this, they were about, I don't know, 40 or $50 cheaper than they are now. And each color is a different price, so go figure on that. But to me, this is a very good budget guitar, probably along the lines of a Squire Affinity Strat. Uh, not a bullet, I do not recommend bullets, but the Affinity Strat, I've had one of those and I was very impressed with it. And I am very impressed with this. Like I said, this is Mirandi Red, more like a milk chocolate color. It's a uh, uh, HSS configuration. We have, I've got it currently strung with 10 gauge strings. I'm used to nines, but I decided to try some tens because uh, these are some new strings that I've got by Black Diamond, which I will be uh, doing a video of here on the channel very soon. Standard floating tremolo, volume, two-tone knobs, five-way pickup selector switch, some vintage style tuners. I'm, I, I really like these tuners, the way they feel, and uh, they're very responsive. And just a, I like the headstock. I mean, it's a good headstock uh, look too. I've just got a standard tuner on there. We've got uh, 22 frets, I believe it is, 21, 22 frets. These are, I would say, mediums, if not medium jumbos. And I guess probably just a plastic nut if I were to guess. It may be, I don't think it's bone. It could be tusk, but I'm pretty sure it's plastic. Standard string tree over here. Nothing very fancy. I've got uh, some pictures here I'll probably display on the screen of the setup that I did on this guitar, the different pictures and things like that. So when you get this guitar, I do recommend that you set it up or have it set up by somebody if you don't know how to do that. It does need some setting up for sure. To me, it plays very well. It, it was very amazing that the neck feels um, really good on this guitar to me. It feels nice in your hand. It's not too thick. It's more of a, probably a smaller C style shape. Very comfortable in the hand and very easy to play on. The action to me is, is a little low for me. Now some of you faster players like uh, low action. With me, I like to play fast, but I also like to grab them bends. And for that to work for me, I have to get under the string just a little bit to pull that up. But I do like the feel of this guitar. As far as the fret sprout, there's not much on it at all. It was very smooth and I noticed it, it would depend on your humidity. You to make sure that you have uh, some somewhere between, I reckon, 55 to 65 percent humidity. You know, I use a simple humidity gauge and thermometer. I've got it back here; I can't reach it, but uh, I use that just to give me an idea of what the room is like. So, like I said, the fresh sprout, hum it depends on humidity. Even the last few days I've been playing this, it's got better. So the neck has expanded a little bit, got drawn a little bit of moisture, and the fresh sprout that was there just a couple of days ago is no longer as bad as it was. And when I first got it, it didn't have any at all. I mean, it felt very nice. And if, if you keep it in its case, it's very good to keep it in its case so that it doesn't, the moisture and everything is not drawn out. Now, as far as the case goes, I will probably show you that here in just a little bit because I don't have it handy here. But this actually comes with a very, very decent case. It's a very nicely padded case, got several pockets. It's got like a backpack style. You can carry it as a backpack or as, as a handle feels very nice and it was just the case alone is probably a $50 or higher 
uh, investment and you're getting the whole guitar for like, I don't know, depending on the color you get, you can get it from between $150 to $189, I think, but that's with a, a decent gig bag case. All right, as promised, I've got the Fesley gig bag case here with you. I wanted to show that to you. To me, I mean, it's a very durable feeling, very nice gig bag. Padding is very nice. It's not super thick or anything like that. It makes a little noise, but it has some substance to it. This is a really good gig bag, in my opinion, for the price you pay for the guitar. It has a huge pocket right here for all your cables, some pedals. I've taken like a, a little zoom pedal in here and, and an adapter and things like that, plus some cables that I needed. Put your extra picks in here, some tools. You can put your whammy bar in here. Anything you need for that, that's the, the only pocket it comes with, but it's got plenty of room for that. Inside is just solid black, nothing really fancy. Also, it has a little bit of a boot on the bottom here so that you can stand it up and not have to worry about getting your case dirty. That's a really good feature. And it also has a backpack style, very easy to carry if you want to do a backpack or it has a handle here on the front if you just need to, to quickly move it from one place to the next. Very, very good quality case in my opinion. And the guitar itself fits in here very nicely, plenty of room. So that's the case. I wanted to make sure to show you that it's totally worth the price of admission for this guitar if you can get a case with such good quality. Now, back to the rest of the video. The edges, as you probably see on some of the setup pictures, I was kind of uh, worried about some of the frets here because it looks like they're, they go into the wood just a little bit. And what I mean by that is they're not all the way to the edge of the wood. So it looks like they go to the edge of the wood and some of them it looks like they go back a little bit further. But so far I haven't had anything hang up. If I go here on the bottom E string, nothing hangs up. So there's, it, it's not anything to worry about for me. I haven't had anything like that. Plays very nicely, like I said. Uh, very nicely played neck. It's maple. It's kind of like a satin feel, the whole thing. This is a matte finish. It's very interesting because it's not satin. It's, it's weird to describe. It's like a hard shell finish, but I like it. And the good thing about this is it hardly leaves any fingerprints. I mean, you don't have to worry about any fingerprints or anything like that. It's, that's what a matte finish is really good for. Once again, this actually looks pretty good now that I'm looking at it on camera. I like it because I've been lately into the, uh, the wood look, the natural wood look of some of my guitars. Um, and this is not a wood look, but it does have that, that dark brownish kind of color that I like. So I kind of, I think it suits me. I, like I said, I would like the, probably like the sunburst one a little bit better than this. So let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like a little bit. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to start with the high pickup and I've got some distortion sounds and it's going to be a little buzzy because these are single coils. So hopefully it won't be too bad. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. I'll be using the, the neck pickup here and then we'll switch through this uh, on the kind of like a dirty sound here. As you can see, this guitar has some killer tones. I'm very pleased with the pickups. I don't see myself changing them anytime soon, but for the price that you pay, and if you decide to get some uh, kind of cheaper pickups, 
uh, that might still be a little bit better quality. It's totally a good guitar for that, good budget guitar if you want to mod, if you want to mod anything, especially the pickups. Now, I like the tremolo system. Right now, like I said, I've got it on 10, so I don't have it floating like I normally would. But let's see how it holds its tune. Right now, I'm not sure if I even am in tune. It sounds like it is. Sounds like it's in tune to me. I didn't tune this before. It may not be standard tuning right now. Uh, if I check real quick on my tuner. Oh, it's definitely low. Give me a second to tune this. All right, just a quick trick about tuning floating tremolo guitars, especially Floyd Rose. I've been tuning my floating tremolos the same as I would any Floyd Rose guitar because it, I feel like it gives it more balance and it stays in tune a lot better. And if you'd like to see the video on that, definitely click on uh, the card up here that I have available for you on how to tune a Floyd Rose tremolo style guitar. Also, a cool trick about tuning is um, something I picked up by a guy called Fredua, and he's on Fredua TV here on YouTube. That's the name of the channel. And he talks about uh, tuning your guitar with the whammy bar. It makes a lot of sense and it really works. Now, I usually tend to use a little bit of graphite here. I've got some graphite all, or if you've got nut sauce or anything like that, you even use a pencil lead and kind of uh, work it in, in the between the nut section here and where the saddles meet. Any point of contact, including this underneath the string tree, is where you kind of want to put anything like that. And that helps tremendously with tuning as well. And I'll leave a link to Fredua's video right here on using that, the whammy bar. So now that we're in tune, let's talk about uh, the tremolo. Once again, if we play this here, Very, very close to in tune. The tremolo works very nice. Right now I've got three springs in here because of the, the higher gauge strings, but it comes with two springs, which I prefer. So when I put my nines back on here, I'll go ahead and put those two strings on there. Intonation holds very well. I've already int intonated this, like I said, when I put the new strings on here just this past week. So the tuners, the only thing I don't really kind of like about these is they feel kind of close together. Uh, they're not locking, which is no issue for me, like I said. I've just, just demonstrated the tr uh, tremolo bar here and the whammy bar. It, it holds tuned very well, very nicely, and I don't ne necessarily feel like I need to change these tuners out. Some guitars have had to do that, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about trying to change the strings real fast on this guitar, so I'm not gonna upgrade it just because of that. These tuners are fine, they have a good feel. They almost feel like a matte finish as well. I really like that. And I like the fact that they're black. I mean, hey, it matches some of the hardware here. I really like that. It's a lot lot of guitar for what you're getting. I mean, it sounds amazing. It plays amazing. Now that I've got the action set up the way I want to, it's amazing. I just can't say much enough good things about it. Uh, let's try some clean tones out and then we'll get to some of the other, uh, not really issues, but the other factors about this guitar. So I'm going to switch to a clean setting and we'll hear what that sounds like. All right. I've got a clean setting enabled here right now. And let's just see what this sounds like. Once again, we're going to start with the top pickup. There shouldn't be a whole lot of noise here. Shouldn't be a whole lot of single coil noise. So, because it's a clean channel. And I think I might have a little bit of a gate on. But let's see what it sounds like, starting with a neck pickup here. Thank you. 
got some nice silky clean tones there for you. Let's talk about probably the main issue and probably the only issue that I have with this guitar. And that is the, the awkwardness of the knob placement against the five-way switch here. Typically when you see guitar players, when they get done with a phrase, they'll turn their volume knob down. Like that. Now, that's kind of hard to see here. So basically I just, at the, after the last phrase, I'll turn that volume down. It's not a problem as long as the five-way switch is, let's see, probably the last two pickup selections. So these two pickups and then this one pickup. As soon as you get to the other pickups, what happens is usually when you're, you're turning that volume knob down, your, your pinky kind of curls around. And you can't really do that because it gets stuck right there in between these two areas here on the, the pickup selector switch, okay? So what I found that I have to do is I have to go straight down with my pinky if I want to turn that volume down. I kind of go straight down with it. And these volume knobs are pretty steady. I mean, they're pretty stable and they've got a lot of, uh, they're not, they don't have a lot of plays, what I'm trying to say. They've got a little bit of resistance to them. So it's kind of hard to get that volume down in one go. So right there, I only have just one little area before I get it all the way. So I have to come straight down and around, not really around, I don't want to curl my finger there because that's awkward. So I have to come straight down with that volume knob. The other two knobs, no issue there as far as uh, you know getting in the way because I just leave them way up. I don't ever use those. So if, if I was to go ahead and turn those uh, a little bit, see what they sound like. So neither one of these tone knobs affect the, the, the back pickup, the bridge pickup. So in that sense, it's kind of set up like a strat is uh, in the sense that one volume or one tone knob controls um, the bridge and the middle when they're on a certain configuration and the other one controls the middle and maybe maybe one call down here let's see let's go to the this this position here so that affects the middle i don't think it's affecting this one it may be because when you go all the way down it opens right back up so i just tend to leave those wide open uh, but to me that's really the only issue that i've had with this other than one more thing I just thought of, one of the good thing, things about this guitar is the fact that it has a pull-out tremolo bar. Isn't that awesome? It pulls out, but if you'll notice, there's this little, probably can't see it in the camera, but there's this little kind of like spot here where it kind of indents all the way around. That, that way it can lock in a little bit better. So if I push this down into there until it clicks, it engages that lock. But the problem is, for me, it kind of sticks out at an odd angle and it's too close to that volume knob. I don't like my uh, tremolo to be kind of like this. So what I tend to do is I push it down until I can feel just the slightest hint of it engaging or hitting that little uh, crevice there. Probably right about there is good. After a while it gets, kind of gets hard to feel where that is, but I don't like to go all the way down with it. It just feels awkward for me to do that. It feels like there's more resistance than if I just let it up a little bit. And it feels at the right spot. You, you might want to play with that figure out what sounds best to you and what you like the sound of, and what, how you like the feel of it the best. As far as the wiring, it's been a while since I set this up because so I can't remember exactly how good the wiring is. I'm pretty sure though, I think I have some pictures on that that I can show you. And it seems like when I checked this out and looked at uh, some of the wiring, that it was, uh, it did look very professional. It was the little dime size pots and things like that. And I'm sure, I'm not sure if this was a 500K pot or not. If it's not, it, it sounds very hot. So there is that. I mean, it's got a, it's a very nice humbucker sound. Uh, that's another thing I like about this guitar. It's got that super strat feel in the fact that it doesn't have a pit guard blocking all of the electronics here. You can easily access those electronics via this plate on the back. And everything's wired just fine. No need for any kind of special tremolo accessories to keep this thing in tune. Just uh, set it up very well and you're well on your way to go. So check this guitar out. There'll be some links below that you can check out. There's different colors. There's like a 
and Mirandi is like their, I guess that's their signature color. I don't know, but it's like Mirandi blue, Mirandi black, Mirandi red, different colors like that. But just be aware that the red one, if it's available still, is more of a brown shade. It's not really red at all. And I, I prefer myself the Sunburst guitar. Um, I've really got a liking for the way that looks, especially since it's a matte finish, it's not a high gloss. And I think it looks very, very nice. Definitely check this guitar out. I think that's all I have on this. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do that and click that notification bell so you can see when more great videos like this are available. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. God bless. And always remember, keep creating.